And all of a sudden, Linda, it just clicked. Everything just like fell together and it just opened up this entire world for me mm. where I just absolutely see the interconnectedness with everything. Welcome to Conversation for the Soul. I'm Linda Christine. Today I talk with Nikki Karras. Nikki is an attorney, an author, a speaker, an entrepreneur, and an animal lover. Mm, someone after my own heart. Today we're going to delve into modality called gematria. I had not heard about it until today, and it is quite fascinating. You basically take each letter of the alphabet, it is assigned a number, and you take names, add up the letters, and they all have meanings assigned to them. Well, in today's episode, we see how John F. Kennedy and Donald Trump line up in Gematria. Now, if you're going to get triggered politically, I recommend that you don't watch this because this is not a political podcast. This is about Gematria. And basically, to me, it's decoding the matrix. And Nikki has done some deep dives and some solid work on her decoding. It's going to take multiple episodes to get through a lot of this. And it is fascinating. At least it was for me. I hope it is for you too. I'd love to hear about it in the comments. And I'm going to ask you, please like, share, and subscribe. That's the way these beautiful stories get out there and get heard and get circulated. And that's exactly what we want. So without further ado, here is Nikki. Ready. Hi, Nikki. It's so wonderful to have you here today. Thank you so much, Linda. Um, so excited to be here. I'm glad. I'm glad. Um, okay. So as with most of my guests, I intuitively stumbled upon you. Okay. Um, and I noticed that you were making some comments in a thread on somebody else's post. And it was fascinating to me. And then we talked a little bit and I'm like, oh, I have to find out more about this. So you said you study or you have a practice of working with, or how do I say it? Gematria? Well, it's not, it's not a practice. It's nothing okay. I do professionally. It's just something that I fell upon um, probably prior to last November um, but it's something that really increased for me after November. I uh, joined this small group on Facebook. I met two of the ladies at a truth truther seminar and it wasn't really my thing, but meeting them was fabulous. So there was a reason I was supposed to be there. And I don't know, my whole world just opened up our connection together, just opened up this whole new layer of awakening for me. And it's basically, you know, you hear a lot about the word quantum, right? Yes. Um, mm -hmm. Everything is quantum. Well, somehow I opened up into that quantum field. Um, so I was, I guess, throughout my spiritual awakening, opening up to it more and more. And then it just really clicked in where it's like actually seeing our entire um, makeup is, is everything is coded every place, every situation, every date. So everything interlocks. It's about finding the connection between it and understanding it. Before we jump into that, I would love to hear how you got to this place in your journey. Where did your journey start? And, and when, we, when were things cracked wide open for you? Well, it started probably when I was 11 and the group of girls gave me a crown of thorns um, to persecute me because I stepped outside the lunch line to say hello to a boy one of them was going out with. And so I was from probably that time forward, I was bullied really, really bad. Um, 300 girls wore I hate Nikki pins to school one time. Um, I, I went through some oh. pretty horrendous <laughs> um, wow. experiences with bullying. And then I kind of went into a shell through college. Law school came about. One thing I didn't share with you uh, the other day was um, 
I went the political scene. My first year of law school was at George Washington uh, University. I landed this great job with the Republican National Committee, even though I'm I'm a registered independent. I did the whole Washington scene and said, yuck, this is not for me. Came back and started a law practice that just exploded overnight. Uh, that you know, after graduating from University of Florida. And at one time I had like 450 cases, uh, one main office, six satellite offices, even up in your neck of the woods, Dade City. And I was working like a hundred hours a week. Mm-hmm. And then um, the, the journey really began in uh, July 4th, 1998. And I'll tie this into Gematria. So um, let me back up. You know, Gematria is where every uh, letter of the alphabet ties to a number. So I use simple Gematria. There's simple Gematria, there's English Gematria, and there's Hebrew Gematria, and I think there's others as well. But simple gematria is assigning a uh, a number to each letter of the alphabet. So A equals one, B equals two, C equals three. So what is Q again? Q is 17. (laughs) And I have a great story. Being a smart ass, you know, I got. No, I I have a great (laughs) story about the number 17. So um, going back, my journey really started in. 1998, my spiritual awakening, I went to the island, um, New Providence Island, to Nassau. And I went on July 4th, and I went 222 years after the signing of the Declaration of Independence. So my name, Nikki Marie Cavacles, my full given legal name equals 221 in Gematria. Well, lo and behold, Declaration of Independence equals 221. Okay. Also, crown of thorns, and that might be the crown of thorns, but I believe it's crown of thorns equals 221. Mm. So it's been really amazing for me. Like once I then tapped into all of this years later, looking back in time over my experiences and seeing how they tied into uh, Gematria. And like, for example, my favorite movie of all times is Last of the Mohicans. I've probably seen that four dozen times, right? Guess what? Last of the Mohicans, 221. Nikki Marie Cavacles, 221. My favorite book of all times is called Hope for the Flowers. It's about uh, these two butterflies that meet. The female's name is yellow and the male is stripe. And I won't go into all that. I mean, it's it's just been what my life has followed, the storyline of this book. Well, lo and behold, yellow butterfly, Two two one. So, going back, my journey started on New Providence Island, and I went there, and I went to a place called Solomon's Mines, and I bought this necklace, um, which also has meaning, and that's sort of when my journey started. And I believe it's all about us opening up, right, obtaining knowledge. Who was Solomon? Right, he was the wise one, right. So it's all about. Um, obtaining gnosis and rising up into your empowerment and into the light. So that journey started July 4th, 1998 and has carried forward to today. And so it's been various uh, levels opening up for me throughout time. Uh, You know, more and more, as they say, more and more light comes in to our body, uh, the more that we see. And so, I mean, I went through an intense spiritual awakening, you know, the butt kicking, losing, you know, everything financially, uh, losing friends, losing family members that wouldn't speak to me, uh, really cleaning house of all the negativity that was in my life to finally get to where I'm at today. And that meant closing my active law practice, which just about killed me physically, but more so soul wise. Um, even though I do some practice now, I don't do seven offices and 450 cases. Um, you know, it, it completely changing my life from mm. the inside out. And during that period, I created uh, several different websites, which I'm now trying to get launched. Here comes the hard part. When you go through one of those butt kicking spiritual awakenings, what usually happens, you lose everything, Right. <laughs> Uh, financially, it's just part of the, unfortunately, the journey. And so now I'm 
at the bottom trying to rise back up like the phoenix which also i think it's phoenix rising is 221 so did so, this happen back in 1998 it was, I went through a very protracted, very long spiritual awakening. Some people have that quick Kundalini awakening. I went for the, you know, the bloodlet, like, you know, over a long period of time. So it was uh, 1998 on Nassau. And then I went to Harbor Island in the Bahamas, March of 1999, was trying to decide if I was going to leave my partnership that I was in and open my own practice. And that happened the day that I was there. The first day was 135 days from when JFK's plane went down. And that number 135 has a lot of significance uh, for all of us, um, which I'll explain later. Um, and so I opened my own law practice, did that from 1999 to 2007. Then my father died. Big, you know, huge uh, upheaval in my life because he was my my oak, my rock. Um, and then another seven years of working, 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 uh, going through a spiritual awakening, um, doing a body cleanse, you know, for like a year and a half that almost dropped me to my knees, you know, detoxing all of that stuff that had been inside of me, emotions, uh, unfortunately, vaccines from childhood, different things like that. Um, and then I, let's see, I let my associate go in 2014 to tailor down my practice. And it took me till 2019 to finally climb out of that box um, and then had the intentions of starting my company and my mom died. So went into grief for a year, came back, you know, reached my I call it Harris Gamos uh, marriage with the Holy creator on January 14th, 2020. Emma, you know, nine months after my mom died to the day and was ready to launch everything and COVID hit. <laughs> so, and we know what a cluster that was. <laughs> it was a cluster. And, you know, my first thing was to go travel and uh, film the street dogs. Um, I've written a book called God dogs. Um, see that so it's part about my journey and so anyway um it's it's just been a rough couple of years mm. I'll get through it you know I, I'm I'm gonna get to where I'm supposed to be we'll put it that way not where I want to be where God source whatever you consider the divine where where they're directing me to go Absolutely. Absolutely. I think that's, that's absolutely the best path too, because you know, what we can think of isn't as great as what source can think of for us. Right. Yeah. And and I've been one that's, I'm rather, I'm not stubborn, but you know, I'm, I guess, yeah, I guess we're all stubborn in some way. So I have fought it for a long time. And then finally you just have to kind of submit and just let it come to you instead of you trying to go to it. I think that's the best way to describe it. Hmm. Yeah. I'm school of hard knocks girl all the way. So I have to be hit upside the head to wake up. <laughs> right. Right. I think we all are that way to some extent. Uh, plus, you know, we've had a lot of things blocking the light from us, um, from, you know, the foods that we eat, uh, our entertainment that keeps us entertained. So even social media, I have to stop myself sometimes and say, okay, focus. Um, we've, yeah, we've, programmed. Had, we've had a lot of distractions. And so fortunately for me, or unfortunately, um, I have been single. I've not been married, lived with anyone or engaged, not because I haven't wanted to, it's just the right person hasn't come along. So it was easier for me to do that really deep soul cleansing journey because I didn't have someone I was answering to and having to say, hey, I'm going off to the Bahamas for a month, you know, and going to go work on my book, which is what I did in 2017, 18. Or so it, it was, it was easier for me in that respect. But on the other hand, even though my mom was living, she, you know, um, was older. She died at 95. She had me at 43. Um, it, it was hard because I didn't have a support system. And at that time, a lot of this still hadn't come to the forefront, on, especially on social media. So you didn't know who you could reach out to 
to say, hey, if you've been through a spiritual awakening, you know, is this right, wrong, what's going on? So I just had to really trust my my instincts and my guidance that I was going in the right direction. And now it seems like it's the thing du jour, you know, everybody's spiritual and some of it's kind of very surface and phony baloney and some of it's really good stuff. So you got to discern. And it's, it's hard. And sometimes I get a little, not angry, but I'm like, that is not an awakening. Like you, you just trust me. Like I've been there. It took me, you know, from 1998 is when it really started till, you know, what are we today? Um, and you can't bypass any of the stuff either. And, you know, a lot of people just want to bypass and go, oh, I'm spiritual. It's like, well. <laughs> and I, I think one thing I, I, I've, I've found concerning about the whole recent movement is they call it a great awakening. And I think it's more a great awareness because an awakening is something that takes a long time. And it's layer upon layer upon layer upon layer. I say it's like an onion and you've got that onion and you're just peeling off layer upon layer upon layer until it's finally open. I was like, you know, like a lotus flower, right? And, you know, that fully opens um, and you're coming up from the mud, the crud, and uh, it's not pleasant and you can't do that overnight. It doesn't happen. It doesn't happen in a month. It doesn't happen in a year. Uh, it It's soul stretching is what I'll call it. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it's really, I mean, for me, it was really just stepping into conscious awareness, mm -hmm. stop living unconsciously and being very conscious and intentional. Right. And it's, it's, I think it's a lifetime experience. And so, um, I love to see the younger people starting to wake up more and more, you know, in their twenties. And I met a young man the other day uh, at tractor supply. He was loading up my car with the dog food. And he was telling me that um, his wife, I said, you had the baby yet? He's like, no, she's overdue. And we're so concerned because if she doesn't have the baby soon, she's going to have to go to the hospital. And they wanted a natural home birth. Uh, they didn't, you know, do anything, you know, shot wise. I know we have to be, I didn't think about that. We have to be careful what is said, but um, he was very into the natural uh, way of living. And I think that's, that's wonderful. And he was very young. I was very, very surprised. Yeah. I, I think Pleasantly. there's a more holistic approach being taken by a lot of the younger people. My daughter, um, 30 stopped, mm -hmm. um, she didn't really realize it until my grandson started having a little bit of issues and they, they both decided uh, no more jabs because they felt it was detrimental. And at that point, when he started having issues, they're like looking into it and learning all the nastiness around it. And, and that's what I did in my practice, uh, probably from around, let me think here. 2002 or one, I got into doing um, what's called mass torts pharmaceutical litigation. So for plaintiffs, persons who were injured, uh, like Baycol, um, Fenfen, um, there were hormone replacement therapy. And with that, looked into the issue of the vaccines. So um, I also was vax injured at 18 from having to take an MMR vaccine to stay in college. So in any event, so I I've saw that whole side. So my whole life has sort of been this, uh, how do I say, um, one experience after another, all sort of leading up to 2020, if that makes any sense. You know, seeing everything from the political side, working in Washington, the legal side, to um, a lot with the medical uh, from uh, what I did in my practice for, you know, 30 years, uh, personal injury, but also the pharmaceutical side of things. And then of course the spiritual awakening that brought that whole aspect, uh, into my world. So I was really fortunate. I've, I've seen a little bit about everything and experienced a little bit about everything in every different realm. So in 2020, um, when they were talking about releasing jabs, we'll just call them that so quickly, okay. what was going through your mind, knowing everything that you know from your law practice? 
well, obviously I was very concerned. Uh, it, it did one thing, it, it hit really close to home for me because I was incredibly worried that I wasn't going to be able to get back out into society without one. And even though I knew that it was wrong, that they couldn't mandate it, um, it, it did cause me a lot of anxiety for a, for several months because I know what I had been through being um, sick from one for 20 years. And it was, I got cystic acne and I went through, you know, at the time, not knowing several rounds of antibiotics, Accutane, talk about lowering one's self-esteem. Uh, and it was a horrible experience until one day I just said, I can't do this anymore, God. I'm like, I just, I can't. And I had gone to the dermatologist and he recommended lifetime Accutane. And I was like, and I was still at the point where I could have children, um, still wanting to meet someone, have a family. I think I was 37 at the time, 38. I came home and I was just, I, I was broken. And I just got down on my hands and knees and I said, I am begging you. I, I used to go for shots in my face. It was a horrible experience. And I woke up the next morning and they were all gone. Wow. <laughs> yeah. I had a spontaneous healing miracle. Wow. That's now I had incredible. like maybe one or two other instances, but it was like, I just got, I mean, I literally was broken and got down on my hands and knees. I said, I am begging you. I cannot do this anymore mm. because it was, it was, it was horrible because, you know, I, unfortunately our society is based on our image. Um, not that it should be, but at that time, you know, everything was the focus on the exterior and I was still of that mindset myself. And, uh, and just the pain factor of going through that, you know, shots in your face are not fun. So I had a spontaneous healing. Wow. What a miracle. Yeah. Mm. So I, you know, seeing all that, I, I don't know. It's, it's surreal. That's all I can say. 2020 and 2021 for me personally, at least for two years, let's say rolling into 2022, March, uh, so that was two years from when it started. It, it seems surreal to me uh, what happened and what we all went through. Yeah, it, it's hard to even look back on it and, and know that it was real. It just felt so, like you said, surreal. Yeah, going to the grocery store and you had to go follow the arrows and I just would keep walking. I, I mean, yeah. I'll be the first to say. I did not obey. Like, I was like, I am not. Are you kidding me? No. You know, and sit down at the table, like walk into a restaurant with a mask on and then sit down at the table. And I'm like, so the virus knows not to go any higher than this. I'm confused here. So um, plus I had also done a lot of research on these issues in my practice. So I you know, I don't want to say call BS because there are people who, who had it or had something right. Um, but it was just all wrong to me. Everything about it, all the narratives were wrong. Well, I know I, I pretty sure I had COVID mm -hmm. three times and then I had something last month that was new and different and very weird and not like anything I've ever had before, but my body takes care of it. I take care of my body. My body takes care and builds immunity from it. I just had something two weeks ago. I woke, like, it was like Monday. I got this uh, really sore throat and for four days, oh, hacking, I was like, oh, this is awful. And that was it, you know, and got through it. Yeah. Yeah. So let's dovetail into how did Gematria come to be and what had led you down the rabbit hole of all of that? Well, I, let me um, let me back up. I'll tell you a great story leading into that and then how it kind of opened up for me. So throughout this journey, this spiritual journey, um, awakening, I have had the most unbelievable signs. Um, I I could go on. We could be here for days. And one of the things that happened uh, was on 
my way home after I also wrote another book. It was called The Toad Chronicles. Now it's called Escape the Swamp. <laughs> so it's a funny, anyway. It's I love that book. cover. <laughs> Thank you. Somebody said this looks like you know who. Oh, yeah, kind of. Okay. <laughs> so um, I was, somebody asked me to do like a, a short presentation to a ladies group. And this was way back, maybe 10 years ago. This book took me forever to write for some reason. It was, again, part of my journey. And so as we're coming back home, she's driving and I'm telling her the story about um, a man I had dated in Virginia and something, you know, he'd broke my heart and, you know, she was asking me about him. I was like, oh no, we broke up. And suddenly she says, look, look what's in front of us. <laughs> and there was this like long Cadillac gold, like stretch, you know, one of those old Cadillacs that seem like they go for miles. And there was a Virginia license plate in front of us and on the license plate, it said 54 frog. Okay. So now I just went and talked about my book at the time. It was called the Toad Chronicles and I'm seeing this license plate. I'm like, there's just no way. Okay. So now the next day I call my investigator and I'm like, I want you to look up this license plate, 54 frog from Virginia. And she, I said, just tell me who owns it. So she calls me back. She says, Nikki, I can't find 54 frog in Virginia. I can't find 54 frogs. She said, I ran at 45. I ran at 54. I ran frog frogs. I'm like, whoa. Okay. Now fast forward, like a couple more, a couple years later, I go to New York city and I'm sitting next to this woman and she's like, why are you here? I'm like, I'm here to meet this publicist about my book, The Toad Chronicles. And she goes, oh my gosh, it's so funny you say Toad. She goes, I call my best friend Frog. And right then the phone rings and it's her friend, you know, Frog. I said, oh, I know. I'm sorry, backing up. My investigator says to me, well, Nikki, do you know what Frog means? And I'm like, no. She goes, fully rely on God. Wow. So here I have this license plate and now I have this woman, right? Who tells me I sit down next to her at a table and she's like, my best friend's name is Frog. So all these signs would come to me. Well, now as I'm writing the God Dogs book, all of a sudden it hits me what the number 54 is. 54 is my name, Nikki. N-I-K-K-I. -K -K -I. So N is 14. I is nine, K is 11, 11, and then I is nine. So that license plate that day, source was speaking to me saying, Nikki, fully rely on God. Mm, and wow. so that was my, yeah, it was amazing. And so in my name, KK is 11, 11. And I'm very tied to the Mary Magdalene template. And so Mary Magdalene is 119 in Gematria. So in my name, you have a 14 is the end. Then you have 911119. So you have the Mary Magdalene number mirrored within my name. Hmm. So things for some reason, this joining in this small group, there's just eight of us. It's a private group. Something about our synergy with these, these ladies, they're uh, from Florida. One though is from North Carolina. Um, and we talk all the time on, you know, the phone talk, you know, on our group, something, oh, I, it was one day, something I said about Trump's post on true social. And I don't post on True Social. I just like peruse and see what's going on. And I said, my God, he does not know how to spell. <laughs> and he capitalizes everything. And they were like, Nikki, they're like, some people say like it's a code. And all of a sudden, Linda, it just clicked. Everything just like fell together. And it just opened up this entire world for me mm. where I just, absolutely see the interconnectedness with everything. Um, and I see it through gematria. 
I see it through time and dates. So I've gone back in my history and looked at certain events. Um, uh, you know, like I was saying that uh, John uh, F. Kennedy Jr., his plane went down supposedly on July 16th, 1999. And I was on Harbor Island in the Bahamas uh, my first day there was March 4th, 1999. And there was this big explosion on the island. And so I started looking at all these significant events in my life and how they interconnected with the Q movement um, with, uh, for some reason, I have a connection with uh, John Fitzgerald Kennedy, whether it's junior or senior you know, in spirit, I don't know anymore. I know sometimes I, you know, whatever happens wouldn't surprise me. Right. Um, so I started looking at all these dates and they all tied to, uh, Trump JFK is just kind of crazy. And so this number one thirty five, okay. Um, Mary Magdalene was believed to be the princess of the house of orange. And it's believed that after the crucifixion, she went to the, to Southern France. She landed at a place, uh, it's St. Delamar, I believe it is. And then one author, his name is Ralph Ellis, has uh, studied it and believes she went to the city of Orange, where she started the Reformation movement and the Enlightenment movement. Okay. The crest for that city is three oranges. Three oranges equals 135 in Gematria. Okay, now the bayou that I live on in Tarpon Springs where I live is Kramer Bayou, 135. The day I was born equates to 135. I was born at Dunedin Hospital. The street next to it is Orange Street. The house number I grew up in, 225 Shaddock Street. Shaddock is a citrus like an orange, 225, Mary Magdalene in the flesh. So I'm not saying that I am her, but it, I think we all have these, how do I say this? Aspects. Yes. You know, things from our, from past lives uh, that we're bringing forward now to sort of fix, if I'm making sense. Absolutely. So one of my my journey has been fixing this um, false narrative about Mary Magdalene and the, the church painted her as a whore. Okay. I've been that route. I had someone very close to me stand up in a restaurant and call me a whore in front of an entire crowded restaurant and because I went out with a man that was separated from his wife, it wasn't my doing. They were both dating other people and it broke up my entire family. And so part of my journey has been to write that narrative for her and that template that she was not a whore. She was an equal, in my opinion, to Jesus. She was a Christed equal. So I have been that uh, journey of rising up into what we call our Christed light. Wow. <laughs> Excuse me, I'm gonna cough, mute this. So it seems like, you know, Constantine and the patriarchy and all of that have wanted to suppress women so long, wanted to suppress anything mystical for so long, didn't want the people, us, to believe that we had any power to create and make magical things happen. Um, None of that is surprising to me at all. Well, and it's also, I believe um, they wanted to suppress the the twin flame union of, you know, the empowered Christed male and the empowered Christed female, because that union is the most powerful union in the universe. It's based in love, which my name also equals love. So that makes me feel good. 54. <laughs> so, um, so those two avatars figures templates together are would be the most powerful union in the universe the christed male which is represented by jesus and the female who is represented by mary magdalene 
And so they literally put her behind a veil, not in Europe, but in the United States. So if you go to Scotland, uh, south of France, many places, she's revered. And there's many uh, stained glass um, depictions of her. There's even one in Kilmore Church um, on the Isle of Mull in Scotland where she's pregnant. Um, it's her and Jesus side by side. You can tell she's pregnant there. I believe there's also one in France somewhere, Glastonbury, all these areas, she was revered as an equal. So my journey has really been helping to write that template within, I believe, you know, the United States, America. Hmm. Wow. And it's not been an easy, <laughs> it's not, no, I was just going to say that's no small undertaking for sure. It's, it's been pretty, pretty, it, it's been amazing. And I didn't put it all together until about the last two years. Um, this is going to sound crazy. Like I, I spent from 2016 through November, excuse me, November, 2015 until, uh, February, 2020, I spent quite a bit of time on an island in the Bahamas called Eleuthera and Eleuthera means freedom. I started off on Harbor Island for like 16 years and then moved to the island of Eleuthera. And one of the crazy things is I spent time with my dog Lulu on a beach that's Alabaster Bay. And so who is Mary Magdalene known as? the woman with the alabaster jar. Wow. And so I did all of this decoding uh, relative to that area. And it, it was just wild. And I mean, I was picking up these white conch shells. They're called milk conchs. Milk conch equals 88. 88 equals Trump. It, and, and I'm, you know, I'm going to sound a little crazy here, but I believe it's an operation that's going on. Um, how do I say? It's not about a person named Trump, but it's about an operation to return us to the light. And that's what I had written in that comment. So I called it Operation Trump, but it's really, I believe it's Operation 45. 45, if you take the numbers zero through nine and you add them together, zero plus one plus two plus three, all the way to nine, that equals 45. So 45 would be all the numbers that comprise our light codes and our existence. So that's why we're hearing in, uh, in the Q movement is, um, although I haven't read the Q post, just a handful of them, um, we're hearing the saying dark to light. So it's about opening up those light codes so then you said there's also a Kennedy connection to Trump. Yes, or did I mistake? Oh, that? yeah, it's it's huge. I mean, I would have to go through like. OK, Scotland has very deep roots in all of this. It's believed that that Jesus and Mary were in Scotland. But then you also have King Arthur, who many believe was in Scotland and not in England. OK. If you look at Trump, if, okay, um, Scotland is 88. Edinburgh is 88. It's believed by some that Edinburgh is actually the real Jerusalem and that everything has been inverted. And I have a friend who writes an interesting blog, The Old World is the New World, and how everything got flipped, even in our maps, in our geography, because everything got hidden from us. So um, Edinburgh is believed to be the seat of King Arthur. Okay, there's actually, I think it's called Arthur's Seat, which is right outside the castle. There's also a place called Holyrood, H-O-L-Y-R-O-O-D. What does that remind you of? Hollywood. Hollywood. So why do you think all the bad stuff has happened in Hollywood? Because the good stuff happened in Holyrood in Scotland. And so they were taking that power away 
from that, you know, um, how do I say? It's a, it's a very spiritual Christed area in Edinburgh. So it goes all the way into um, the Hebrides Islands. Think about what the word Hebrides, what does that sound like? Hebrews, doesn't it? Mm. Okay. So I have family that came from the Isle of Skye. It was actually going back in my ancestry. They were actually the taxmen for the McLeods, which is part of the Trump family. But if you go in and you look at it's wild, <laughs> uh, let me give you an example. If you go and look at Bedminster, where he has a golf course, and you put in the gematria for Bedminster, Bedminster, New Jersey equals 223. 223 equals John Fitzgerald Kennedy. Bedminster is also known as Bedminster Township. Bedminster Township equals 233, John Fitzgerald Kennedy. If you go to his course in Ireland, and I can't remember where it's at, but that location is 125, John Kennedy. I have pages and pages and pages of downloads. So of, what do you do yeah. when you, you find all these correlations? So you're finding all these numbers that match this person and this person. Mm -hmm. How do you discern what all of that means? It's hard. I mean, because some of it's so wild that I'm just like, okay, <laughs> what does it mean in the big picture? So I'm just, you know, more for me, it's trying to find my path and where I fit into all of this. And what am I supposed to do with this knowledge? Or where am I supposed to be to help facilitate something for the collective? So I've made uh, day trips, believe it or not, because only because with my sanctuary, it's hard for me to get away. But I've made day trips to Dallas. If you go and and again, you know, sometime if you want to do this again, I can pull up specific examples for you. But looking at like Dallas, for example, um, all of that area where Kennedy was assassinated, heavily, heavily coded with numbers. Unbelievable. From the depository to the street, to the time that he was shot, to what uh, Jackie O was wearing that day. Um, if you do the license plate that's on the front of the car, GG, what is it? Seven, oh gosh, I can't remember. It's It's on the front of the license plate of the car. I decoded that all the way down to the black diamonds that are on it. And what does it say? President Donald J. Trump in three different locations. So I don't know what all that means. I, you know, some people say we're in like a, a simulation. Some say time has been warped. Um, I'm open to any possibility. We'll put it that way. Nothing, nothing would surprise me at this point. Well, as you're talking about all of this, I just keep thinking matrix, 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 because the matrix is all code. Correct. And so this is all code. And, you know, you're matching this code with this code, and they're all telling you all these things that match up. Right. Wow. Wow. And it, it's, <laughs> it's why like, okay, for example, Sunday night, I, well, today's Monday, sorry, last night, gosh, I'm lost track of time. I went to get some sushi. And in the car, I, I'm not kidding you, this sounds so strange. I looked in the mirror, I said, I look blue. Like I look blue for some reason. And of course I said, do I look gray? Cause you know, God forbid want to be sick. And I'm like, no, I look blue. And I'm like, that is just bizarre. So I didn't know why I look blue. Maybe it was just the haze that was coming in. Well then today somebody says, oh, you realize that the hurricane, cause you know, we have a hurricane coming this way, potentially mm -hmm. uh, Adalia, which also has meaning uh, the name Adalia means behold the sun. So I have been saying that the energy of the sun, which is Jesus is coming for his moon, which is Mary moon equals 47 equals Mary. Okay. So something I did a, a decode on it and it came right out to two, two, five, Mary Magdalene in the flesh. 
And then it came out to 277, which is quantum financial system, which everybody is waiting for. Um, something about bl uh, blue moon is black swan event came to 277. And 277 is quantum financial system. Because, you know, everybody keeps saying we're going to have this crash of the financial system to welcome in the new system. Hmm. So, but when you look at like a number like 277, 77 is Christ, right? The two would represent the Christed energies, the double Christed energies. So I've learned, Linda, how to take these numbers and look at them and look at the order of the numbers and to find meaning in them. Oh, beautiful baby. <laughs> oh, so, he's got to be a part of everything. It's like, she's here. Oh, hi. <laughs> He like so, eventually gets the energy coming through and he's like, mm -hmm. has to be a part of it. Yeah. So it, it's, it's just wild. So, you know, everything from seven, seven is Christ. So when I see two, seven, seven, that means the male and the female Christed energies, the one, seven, seven would be a single energy. Three, seven, seven would be the, the, the Trinity. And so you can go to, I think it's gematrix.org, G E M A T R I X.org. And you can put in different phrases and you'll see uh, other phrases that match those numbers, right? And you can begin to piece it all together. Mm. So I, I say, I don't even, I don't know, I'm even sure I speak English anymore. I speak Gematria. I don't know. You know, oh, for the love of Gematria, 221, that's my name. You know, 14th Amendment, that's something that I'm working on as a lawyer, trying to figure out how do we get in, uh, to challenge the 14th Amendment, which is basically enslaved us all from 1863 by making us citizens of the federal government. 221, my name, 14th Amendment. Uh, uh, King Arthur Pendragon, who I have a tie to, who I believe John Fitzgerald Kennedy had a tie to, because that was his favorite movie, was Camelot, right? So King Arthur Pendragon, 221. What was Arthur's first name before he became king? Wart. What was my book about? Toad Chronicles. Warts. So it's all, it's crazy. My company, Finding Zenny, 117, Mary of Magdala. You know, uh, and these were things, Linda, that I did before I knew any of this. It's not like I went and said, let me go name myself this, right? Um. Yeah. You know, just absolutely crazy wow. in a good way. In a yeah. good way. Oh, yeah. I don't mean this, to, to... this could go so deep. Oh, it does. It it it's incredibly deep. And I've always been very mathematically inclined, number inclined, putting pieces of the puzzle together. So try sleeping once this opens up to you. Oh God. <laughs> Bless your heart. <laughs> it's hard because I, I mean, I'll wake up in the middle of the night and I just will have like a whole series of just downloads and it's not like I'm thinking about it. It just literally just right to me and everything just comes. So, um, do you have a blog or anything where you track all of this no, publicly? Either. No, I haven't. I'm kind. Okay. So having gone through all that with the bullying. I've been a little low key. Um, I did do a whole series of inspirational videos. I have a YouTube channel. Um, I have some websites that I'm trying to get launched, but I've just been through, excuse me, the shit storm. Probably shouldn't say that, but you know, the, the storm, right? Um, and I think what I'm going to do is I downloaded all of my stuff from Facebook, um, from this group, and I'm going to call through all of that and then start doing a blog, maybe even a, a, an ebook. So people can start seeing how things code and how things are interrelated. And even though they're my personal codes, a lot of it, a lot of it relates to the collective and what we're going through. Um, but I thought that would be a good way for people. It won't be something written in a nice book form, but it'll just be page after page of, of different codes. Well, and I think that would be such a huge benefit because what you're so entrenched in it, mm -hmm. somebody could come in with a new set of eyes and just totally open up something right. else that yes. would maybe assist you. And uh -huh. yeah. Wow. And it's, it's, there's some days when I I'm 
I'm in the five, I guess we call it the five D, right? And I have to remember, you know, you have to get grounded. You know, that's what my animals do for me. They keep me grounded in the 3D, whether I like it or not. Even though they operate from the 5D, their needs and wants ground me in the 3D. Um, but there is a whole nother world out there that we um, have not yet tapped into. We're just starting to. So what we see in the 3D is just a small, small portion uh, of what's out there. And I mean, I've had, um, if you have a moment, I don't know, time-wise, I can tell you a quick story. Yeah, please do. We're uh, fine. So there was a dog, you know, I've, obviously I have a sanctuary of animals and they've been part of my journey where these animals literally appeared in my path. Many of them were rescued on a number 22 day. 22 is the joining of the, the twin flames, the, the, uh, 1111. Um, it's also a number relevant to uh, King Solomon. Um, one of my dog's names is Solomon. I rescued him on a 22 day, but there's one dog in particular. Um, it took me five years to get her. It's a very long story um, of how I paid for her rescue from the streets of Turkey in 2010. And the woman who I gave her to would not then give her to me. And it took me five years years to get this dog and everyone is like what is it about this dog and I said she represents the completion of a journey I've been on and it started in Harbor Island March of 1999 now I don't know where that came from that just came out of my mouth so this was it, it took several attempts but finally the woman uh, I almost had I had her in a van one time it's a long story she found out got her back tried to go and break into the kennels that, you know, anyway, crazy stuff. Cause this dog I knew had to be with me and I never met her personally. I only, it was just that connection. So finally she sends her to England to a kennel. And this one woman who had been associated with her contacts me and she says, I know where the dog is going. I'm going to help you find her. And I'm like, oh God, no, I can't go through this heartbreak. This would be like the fourth time. And she goes, let me, let me see if I can find an address for her and let me see what I can do. So next thing, about two weeks later, she calls me. She's like, I found a pet detective. I'm like, I guess a pet detective. I guess pet thievery in England is really big. So she finds this pet detective. He has my dad's birthday. I'm like, all right, that's a good sign. And she's like, I think the dog is at this location. I'm like, oh, I don't know. I'm like, how much? So I send some money. Sure enough, the dog was there. Okay. So now I'll never forget the call from this pet detective that he secured at the time. Her name was Lucky. So Lucky now goes to a farm in England. Uh, well, she was in England, but goes from Norfolk, England to, I forget where it was. And I'm supposed to now fly over and pick her up. And two days before I'm supposed to leave, my mom, 93, 92, never been in the hospital. Actually, I think she was 91, falls and breaks her leg. Okay. So I called the pet detective and I said, I think I'm going to need to, uh, cancel the trip or just, you know, prolong it. And he's like, no problem. Um, you know, I've got her on this farm. And I said, you know, I have no business. This is a great story. <laughs> Coming to England, I'm supposed to go to, to Cuba in two weeks. And I said, but I can't cancel. I have this visa. And he's like, Cuba, he's like, you should talk to Peter about Cuba. And I'm like, who's Peter? And he's like, well, remember I told you the kennels are busy in the area because it's it's summer break. He said, I put her lucky on a farm owned by my friend Peter on his farm. And I'm like, Peter, all of a sudden this light bulb went off. I go, has Peter ever been to the Bahamas? And he's like, yeah, I go Harbor Island. He goes, I don't know. And I said, well, you know, I told you that this dog represents a completion of a journey I've been on. And it started March of 1999. And I met this man. Ah, now, God, I sound crazy. I met this man named Peter. Ah, never mind. 
I stopped myself. I said, red Ferrari. He said, yeah, I go, no way. I go, this uh-huh. cannot be the same man. And so I said, he says, what did your Peter do? And I said, well, he was in real estate or business. He goes, yeah. And I said, slight man, small build. He said, yes. And I said, all of it, I go, he was an orphan. He was in shipping in North Africa, wasn't he? He said, yes. So this story is 17. What's the number? Q, Mm. right? Q is quantum consciousness. 17 years later, this dog that I knew I had to get because she represented part of my journey ended up on a farm owned by a man that I met 17 years earlier, that not the first day that I arrived, but the next day on Harbor Island. And he was the one that was instrumental in uh, pushing me to go into my own practice, telling me I could do it. When I heard his story of being an orphan and what he had done. And so the day before I leave England, I'm walking, we're walking the dog out on this farm and I look up and there's 17 Canadian geese fly over the farm, right? And then I get to the airport after we drop her off at cargo, she's safe in cargo. And in Gatwick airport, you, you sit like in the lobby area and you wait for them to call your gate, right? Guess what the number was? 17. 17. I'm like, there's no, and at the time I didn't know what 17 meant. And so I got to the gate and I'm crying and, you know, the flight attendants and the ticket agents like, are you okay? I'm like, yeah, I go, I'm, I'm taking my baby home. I'm taking my girl home. And I knew that it was not just about her, but it was about myself, you know, coming back to myself. And that was August, the lion's gate, uh, August, 2015. So that was like the completion of one major portion. And then this, hopefully this, I think by September 11th, um, which is interesting. My birthday is January 30th to September 11th is 225 days. 225 is Mary Magdalene in the flesh. So I I'm, I'm actually going to go to New York city, I believe on that day uh, for September 11th. So If you were to venture a guess, where is all of this going? What might that be? Um, I I think we are headed, um, well, to the age of Aquarius, okay? Um, Going back, um, I'm not political and I don't want to trigger anybody with any of it. So when I say certain names, it's not because I'm, I'm heavy into politics. I'm not, oh, we're I'm, way past that. We said the T yeah. word too many times. <laughs> yeah, I know that. And I don't want people and that's to okay. said that. Um, it's not because I'm political. It's because I see that there is a spiritual operation going on, whether he's in charge or someone else is in charge or source or whatever. That's what I believe in. Um, you know, I, I'll be honest, I've voted like twice in my whole life. I, because I worked in Washington and I was asked to research everything on gerrymandering to help redraw the, uh, the district lines. And so I saw at that point that it was, how do I say, it was more a business than it was about the human aspect, if I'm making sense. Yep. So anyway, uh, where was I going with that? So where do I think this is going? I truly believe we are headed to the age of Aquarius. We are at the entry point of the age of Aquarius. And the age of Aquarius is about the freedom of the individuals. Uh, You know, we've been enslaved by the sort of, uh, by the Roman empire system, which has kept us enslaved through the monetary and legal systems are all based on uh, the Roman empire. And that also goes back to the Jewish Roman revolt that Jesus fought uh, with the the fishermen and lost. And it's believed that that's when Mary Magdalene uh, went into exile in the South of France. Some say he was crucified. Some people say, no, he lived, you know. So um, I believe we are replaying that narrative, right, to now write what happened 
because the Roman Empire, everything that we have right now is based on that system. And it's a system system of enslavement and taxes and so forth. So I believe we are headed into the age of Aquarius, which is going to free us from all of that enslavement. And as people begin to rise up into um, their Christed light. And so it's not something that's going to happen overnight, but um, when you hear the man with the T letter talk about um, return the diamonds, okay, um, that means our diamond microchip because our uh, pineal gland is actually our microchip. And so he, if you listen to his speech from November 15th at Mar-a-Lago, he talks about America was about to enter a golden age. That golden age is the age of Aquarius. And it's about returning the power to the people. And so that we become more responsible for our lives instead of others being responsible for us or us placing that responsibility into our governments and into um churches and all these different areas. Even now I try to encourage people in the legal uh, realm. I'm helping some people, I'm ghostwriting for them behind the scenes so they can then go and argue their case before the court because that's where true empowerment comes from. Hmm. So that's wow. what I see happening. Nikki, you are this is not going to be the the only podcast. We got to oh. do more because I just feel like there's so many layers that we can uncover here. Oh, I'd love to. And I'm so sorry I used some of the trigger words. So. No, 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 no. Don't be. No, don't you know, be. I, you know, I don't know what um what what you can say anymore. It it you know, uh, unfortunately, freedom of speech has been yeah been stymied in many ways. Well, and the cancel culture is huge too. So whatever, cancel me. I don't care. <laughs> but and before time, and I can next time um I can prepare I you know I with zoom uh some slides so because it's it's sometimes difficult unless it's visual so yeah. I can pull up some of those decodes that I've done so people can see so then they can take this and apply it in their own life and that's what I want people to learn because once you do your whole world opens up and you realize you're not you're not just passing through, you're here for a purpose. And so uh, my book, God Dogs, I say every animal has a soul, every soul has a purpose. That animal includes, that's humans too. I'm not saying we're animals, but we all have a soul and we all have a purpose. And so by using these different tools that are out there, you can help to open up and find out what is my path? Why am I here? What is my purpose? Hmm. Beautiful. Before we go, I want you to tell everybody where they can find you. And uh, I'll put the information below in the description as well. Oh, I just Nikki Karras.com, which is my author site. And then that ties into um, a couple of my different sites. But and one then of my- one of these days, we'll have to talk about your animal sanctuary too, because that's a beautiful cause. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it, it's 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 rewarding. It's a lot of work, and I'll, I'll be seventy or seventy-two before I'm done. <laughs> I say I've cut my tubes. I'm not, you know, adopting anymore. But I never was a formal rescue. I just did it, uh, you know, out of the goodness of my heart. Self-funded it for for years, and animals would literally just appear in my path. And one of them was adopted by a man with the last name of Solomon, and on a twenty-two day. And so that's a wild story for another day. So, oh, wow. Wow. Oh, this has been a real pleasure, Nikki. Thank Thank you you. so much. I appreciate you so much for having me on. Thank you. Great night. All right.